When we talk about ancient Earth in terms of just after the planet formed, one of the biggest questions we have is how did water come to be on Earth? The origins of water on planet Earth is still an unanswered question across multiple disciplines. Water is necessary for life as we know it and it is also at the root of the question of how life formed on Earth. Now, ocean water, of course, is salty. Salts and minerals are present in our rocks and when water falls on them and mixes with them, it becomes salt water. But we also have fresh water, which obviously falls when salt water evaporates and then falls down and then concentrates. At what point fresh water that sustains life came to be on Earth has also continued to be an enduring mystery because that would require water cycle with rain. A new study has offered some findings that date water back to 4 billion years ago, which is a mere 500 to 600 million years after the planet formed. That is surprisingly quick in geological time. And this finding also predates existing theories of the existence of water by about 400 million years. Sure, there are implications, but more interesting is how do researchers really date ancient water? Water is water. How can you date water? When volcanoes have constantly covered our surface with new rock and land, how can we get precise numbers? And water also constantly evaporates and condenses. So how do we know that water existed 4 billion years ago or even 3.4 billion years ago as current research shows? Let's have a look. Experts today believe that ancient Earth, when it formed, was a bit too hot and was not really conducive to reactions that could produce water on their own in that environment. Therefore, what happened was that water carrying asteroids and comets, just space rocks, pummeled the Earth around 4 billion years ago. This is what experts believe transferred water to new Earth. This period of ancient Earth history going through this phase of bombardment actually has a name which is called the late heavy bombardment which occurred 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago and all rocky planets along with their moons were hit with a large number of asteroids and comets. Now I do have to say that this theory is contentious as to whether there really were an unusual number of asteroids, whether there was a spike. But these space rocks nonetheless were impacting Earth regularly and experts believe that they did transfer water. We know that these impacts occurred because of lunar craters which preserve evidence and haven't been wiped out by air or water or more importantly volcanoes which cover the craters on Earth. The Earth formed 4.5 billion years-ish ago, so this, whatever we're talking about, is shortly after. Now, we have studies showing that rainfall had begun occurring by 3.4 billion years ago, about a billion years after the Earth formed. But for rainfall to occur, there needs to be a water cycle and large quantities of water, in fact, large bodies of water, which would have taken time to form since the first rock hit Earth with water. Now, in this study, geologists have determined that rock crystals from some of the oldest rocks in Australia indicate that fresh water had already appeared on Earth around 4 billion years ago. Not just seawater, not salt water, but fresh water, meaning that water had begun to evaporate and fall down somehow in quantities large enough to give us this fossil data. The findings were published in the journal Nature Geosciences this week. And these dates predate existing theories and data about when fresh water might have occurred on Earth by almost 400 to 600 million years. The analysis was performed on 4 billion year old zircon crystals from Western Australia's Jack Hills, which are some of the oldest existing rock formations in the world. And here comes the fun part of the study. Rocks on Earth contain minerals and salts, which can be studied for their concentrations in the lab. The researchers analyze these samples. They study isotopes of oxygen molecules to understand whether salty water might have evaporated from the rocks to rain back down onto those very rocks. 
when water evaporates from the surface of the ocean or from any surface, say the tops of rocks, it leaves behind salt while simultaneously also undergoing molecular makeup changes. The lighter isotope of oxygen, which is called oxygen 16, is lighter and evaporates quicker than oxygen 18 does. Both of these are present in water. The evaporated water tends to become oxygen 16 rich, while the water that is left behind tends to become oxygen 18 rich. This oxygen 16 rich fresh water rains down and once again undergoes evaporation, where more oxygen 18 remains back and more oxygen 16 evaporates. Over a period of time, fresh water becomes concentrated in oxygen 16, while seawater mainly comprises the heavier oxygen 18. Meanwhile, oxygen 16 water also percolates into rocks when it rains down and it reacts chemically with rocks or magma that flows deep underground. This reaction releases oxygen 16 molecules in the ambient environment into these structures, which then millions of years later ends up providing us evidence of freshwater permeation and percolation into these rocks. This is the theoretical method that was used to understand just how much water was present on ancient Earth. And the study was conducted on one of the most fascinating regions on Earth for geology. Jack Hills in Australia is a treasure. Most of our Earth's surface is constantly refreshed and covered with new layers of lava because Earth is geologically active and has active volcanism. These layers of lava keep layering over themselves and form new land on which we live. In fact, when the dinosaurs were dying 65 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent was leaking basaltic lava flows for millions of years, layering new liquid rock over existing rock, upon which we ultimately live today. But there are some parts of the Earth that have been shielded from newer volcanism, New volcanism did not occur here long enough for us to think that these rock structures are some of the oldest existing in today's world. These rocks and rock formations are found spread out across the earth in Africa, in Canada, Greenland, Australia, and even in England. Jack Hills is quite unique for geology. It is located in Western Australia and it is dated to 4.404 billion years ago. So approximately about 100 million years after the Earth formed, just a literal blink in geological time. Here, just like in lots of other places, there exist rock crystals called zircons. Yes, the same zircons that are also called lab-grown diamonds and that are sold as other precious gemstones that are grown in the lab. Zircons are silicates, meaning they are made of silica when it melts at high temperature and it forms a specific crystal structure that is unique to zircons. The zircons that formed 4 billion years ago in what is called the Hadean Aeon are of course called Hadean zircons. And these are the oldest surviving crust material from Earth's formation period. Because they are resistant to chemical changes, zircons, and reactions, and physical changes that occur in rocks also don't affect them that much, they preserve really well if they're not buried in lava. Therefore, zircons are very commonly used for dating rocks wherever they're found because they are that reliable. Interestingly, zircon crystals are so hardy that even in places like Jack Hills where they are found, the crystals themselves are way older than the rocks that they are found in. In the context of Jack Hills' importance, it is also important to note that some of the oldest remains of life have been dated to this formation in 4.1 billion year old rocks where indications of remnants of life have been found. That's a whole other fascinating thing, but let's get back to the water. That is now being dated to 4 billion years ago. More than 1,300 pieces of zircon crystals were analyzed from Jack Hills for their isotopic oxygen ratios across time. The team noticed that most zircons were concentrated in oxygen 18, but they also found something very fascinating. Zircons that were dated to two specific time periods, not one, but two two time periods were more concentrated in oxygen 16. This indicates that at these time periods, there was more fresh water in these regions where the zircons formed. 
These freshwater rocks were dated to around 3.4 billion years ago and to 4 billion years ago. Those were the two time periods. 3.4 billion years ago that we already know. Current literature states that rain had definitely begun to fall in some parts, if not most parts of the world by this time, 3.4 billion years ago. So this paper adds to that evidence and that's awesome. But the more significant aspect of this paper, the more interesting number is the 4 billion years ago number, of course. In the paper, the team concludes that the majority of water on Earth was indeed salty and by 4 billion years ago, enough land had emerged from seas, if seas had existed, to actually have a freshwater cycle above the ground, not just in the oceans. But they also speculate, the authors speculate whether there were global oceans already by 4 billion years ago and we kind of think they probably were definitely by 3.4 billion years ago as previous studies have shown. This is because the concentrations of oxygen-16 observed in these zircon crystals can be seen only if a significant amount of fresh water had been present on the planet. But the authors do state that this is just speculation. The fact that fresh water was present in one region in some rocks does not really imply that there were global oceans that were producing favorable conditions for hydrothermal vents to begin the origins of life. But what we can know is that suddenly there was indeed a lot of water at 4 billion years ago, which is a mere 400 to 500 to 600 million years after the Earth's formation, and that has implications. Even though we don't know how much water was present, the findings will indeed affect the way we study origins of life. So now we've learned all of this, but how exactly does it help that we know that water existed earlier than we thought it did? First, search for life. Life as we know it depends on water, right? We are all carbon-based life forms and we need water necessarily to survive. On this planet, that is what we have observed. Water can exist only at certain conditions of temperature and pressure. This also helps us redefine habitable zones. For example, Saturn the planet is definitely not in the habitable zone. It is way too cold. And neither is its moon Enceladus. But Enceladus is a ball of ice with a frozen crust and a subsurface global water ocean that is warmer. Same is the case with Jupiter's moon Europa. Identical theory. Icy crust, subsurface, warmer water. A lot of astrobiologists think that these two moons could actually satisfy the criteria for habitability when it comes to life living in the global ocean under the crust of the moon. Not that we know life exists, we still have missions that are going to go and study these two moons. But understanding how water came to be on early Earth can also help us understand where else water can survive and thus where else to search for life in a more efficient manner. Second, understanding the origins of water on our planet help us understand how our geology evolved. Water percolates everywhere and our planet has more water than land. Water has thus played a huge role in the planet's geomorphology or surface structure changes. This includes, as we very well know, things like canyons that are being shaped by the flow of water on the surface and also underground and also reacting with rocks and magma that shape things there too below the surface. The authors say that the emergence of continental crust, the presence of fresh water and the start of the hydrological cycle probably helped develop these specific environmental niches that are required for the formation of life within just about 600 years after the planet itself formed. And that tells us a lot about just how quickly life can form, water can form, the conditions for life can form and how probably our ancient history didn't really evolve as slowly as we thought it did, despite evolution still being slow. And all of this is, of course, just speculation. There still needs to be more studies and more research. So how will this research carry on further? Well, more zircons dated to these two time periods will be studied wherever possible, and then computer models and simulations will come up with theories about the environment back then. With this, scientists would be able to make advances in our study of the history of water and how it supports life. 
It is also going to help in understanding the origins of life and how water shaped our planet in more minute detail that is of scientific significance and relevance. To an extent, these findings will also help us understand our own future with water and how it looks as we enter periods of extreme droughts and floods, both often alternating in the same places around the world.